brothers and sisters in Christ, we are now in the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, Singapore, and so let us begin.
3 o'clock prayer, Hour of Mercy. You expired Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world, O fount of life. Unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Father, for gathering us to honour the divine mercy, and we pray for the following intentions. The conversion of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, deliver your people. That the divine mercy become known, so that everyone will extol Christ's goodness. Lord, in your mercy, deliver your people. We place before you, Jesus, our Blessed Mother's love, desires and intention. Lord, in your mercy, deliver your people. For the, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that through him, your love and peace may touch many hearts. Lord, in your mercy, deliver your people. For more vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and we pray for our Archbishop William Go, our parish priests, and all priests and religious. Lord, in your mercy, deliver your people. For all our parishes, churches, schools, and all their needs, we pray especially for those not baptized, the sick, aged, lonely, oppressed, and those suffering from cancer. Lord, in your mercy, deliver your people. For all who are dying in this day, especially the most hardened sinners and those who in particular are suffering due to the coronavirus pandemic outbreak, that they may acknowledge you, Lord, as their merciful Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, deliver your people. For the children, youth and young adults who are exposed to the severe temptations of this present age. We pray that parents will strengthen their own faith to preserve the gifts of the sacraments of Holy Eucharist and Reconciliation and to share and live the Gospel as true Christians in the family and society. Lord, in your mercy, deliver your people. Jesus, show us your mercy as we face the challenges of divorce, abortion, euthanasia culture and the embryonic stem cell research that all be terminated throughout the world. We offer you the talents of our people to do your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, deliver your people. For your mercy on all holy souls in purgatory, especially for our loved ones and the most forgotten souls and all the souls most nearest to heaven. Lord, in your mercy, deliver your people. Let us pause for a few moments in silence to pray specially for those we wish to remember during this hour of prayer. Lord, in, in your, your mercy, mercy, deliver your people. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I For 
the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the the 
sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the For the 
sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the Praises to divine mercy. The love of God is the flower. Mercy the fruit. Divine mercy gushing forth from the bosom of the Father. I trust in you. Divine mercy, greatest attribute of God. I trust in you. Divine mercy, incomprehensible mystery. I trust in you. Divine mercy, fountain gushing forth from the mystery of the most blessed Trinity. I trust in you. Divine mercy, unfathomed by any intellect, human or angelic. I trust in you. Divine mercy, from which wells forth all life and happiness. I trust in you. Divine mercy, better than the heavens. I trust in you. Divine mercy, source of miracles and wonders. I trust in you. Divine mercy, encompassing the whole universe. I trust in you. Divine mercy, descending to earth, in the person of the Incarnate Word. I trust in you. Divine mercy which flowed out from the open wound of the heart of Jesus. I trust in you. Divine mercy enclosed in the heart of Jesus for us and especially for sinners. I trust in you. Divine mercy unfathomed in the institution of the sacred host. I trust in you. Divine mercy in the founding of Holy Church. 
I trust in you. Divine mercy in the sacrament of holy baptism. I trust in you. Divine mercy in our justification through Jesus Christ. I trust in you. Divine mercy accompanying us through our whole life. I trust in you. Divine mercy embracing us especially at the hour of death. I trust in you. Divine mercy endowing us with immortal life. I trust in you. Divine mercy accompanying us every moment of our lives. I trust in you. Divine mercy shielding us from the fire of hell. I trust in you. Divine mercy in the conversion of hardened sinners. I trust in you. Divine mercy astonishment for angels incomprehensible to saints. I trust in you. Divine mercy unfathomed in all the mysteries of God. I trust in you. Divine mercy lifting us out of every misery. I trust in you. Divine mercy source of our happiness and joy. I trust in you. Divine mercy in calling us forth from nothingness to into existence. I trust in you. Divine mercy embracing all the works of His hands. I trust in you. Divine mercy crown of all God's handiwork. I trust in you. Divine mercy in which we are all immersed. I trust in you. Divine mercy sweet relief for anguished hearts. I trust, I trust in you. Divine mercy only hope of despairing souls. I trust in you. Divine mercy repose of hearts peace amidst fear. I trust in you. Divine mercy delight and ecstasy of holy souls. I trust in you. Divine mercy inspiring hope against all hope. I trust in you. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent by the great confidence, submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy forever. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, it is appropriate that we reflect on the mercy of God in the context of the present coronavirus pandemic outbreak. For the first time, our Universal Church is celebrating Mercy Sunday in our homes, where masses are suspended all over the world. All our other sacraments of baptism, reconciliation, confirmation, anointing of the sick, marriage and ordination to the priesthood are also suspended. So spiritually, our church is greatly impoverished. Economically, the world is also in a great crisis and the poorest of the poor are the most affected. Even our nation, Singapore, some 70% of the COVID-19 cases that are emerging are from our migrant workers. My sisters and brothers in Christ, our whole world is brought to a standstill and on to her knees simply by one single invisible virus. Scientists will take some 10 years or longer to identify the actual cause of the coronavirus outbreak, to trace how this virus from animal have been transmitted on to human beings. On Friday, March the 27th, our Holy Father Pope Francis, in delivering the Urbi at Orbi prayer at the empty St. Peter's Square at the Vatican said, thick darkness has gathered over our squares, our streets, and our cities. It has taken over our lives, filling everything with a deafening silence and a distressing void that stops everything as it passes by. We feel it in the air. We notice in people's gestures, 
their glances give them away. Pope Francis, with great insights, then adds, We find ourselves afraid and lost. For Christians, the present moment is the time to choose what matters and what passes away. A time to separate what is necessary from what is not. Humanity has run forward at a breakneck speed, greedily seeking profit and drunk in its own power. And speaking to God, Pope Francis prays, Heavenly Father, we did not stop at your reproach to us. We were not shaken awake by wars of injustice across the world. Nor did we listen to the cry of the poor or our ailing planet. We carried on regardless, thinking we would stay healthy in a world that was sick. It is a time to get our lives back on track with regard to you, Lord, and to others. My sisters and brothers in Christ, since Pope Francis' message on the 27th of March, which is about three weeks ago, Singapore alone had 732 cases with two deaths. But as of today, we have 5,992 cases and with 11 deaths. Globally, on the 27th of March, there were 518,000 287 cases and with 23,528 deaths. And as of yesterday, this has increased to 2,261,034 cases and with deaths of 154,726. We can see that the coronavirus situation globally has increased exponentially and continues to threaten our human race if the trend of the worsening situation is not contained and reversed. My sisters and brothers in Christ, humanity is called to heed the signs of the times. Humanity in her creativity and power has become too arrogant and proud. In the name of progress, we have destroyed Mother Earth and in the name of material wealth and glory and power, we have forgotten and obstinately defied God, who is the almighty creator of the universe and of every human person that exists and existed. Whether they are in the wombs of mothers at the time of conception or in the test tubes of the laboratory of scientists, they are all human beings created in the image and likeness of God and are all God's precious children. We now need to humble ourselves and recognize God as God, who is our Creator, Lord and Savior. Indeed, all of humanity must go on her knees and return to our God and worship Him as our true God, who is our Lord and Savior before we destroy and decimate the human race. My brothers and sisters, we need to have a radical conversion of our hearts. For this radical conversion, you and I need to live a more vigilant faith that entrusts everything to God's merciful hand. And so let us take heed from St. Faustina, who in her diary, paragraph 1183 says, O Jesus, I want to live in the present moment, to live as if this were the last day of my life. I want to use every moment scrupulously for the greater glory of God, to use every circumstance for the benefit of my soul. I want to look upon everything from the point of view that nothing happens without the will of God. God of unfathomable mercy, embrace the whole world and pour yourself out upon us through the merciful heart of Jesus. To live such a life of radical conversion of our hearts 
St. Faustina reminds us that regardless of who we are and what state of life or faith we may be in, we are always to develop a life of fervent prayer. And in paragraph 146 of her diary, she says, By prayer, our soul arms itself for all kinds of combat. In whatever state the soul may be, we ought to pray. A soul which is pure and beautiful must pray or else it will lose its beauty. A soul which is striving after its purity must pray or else it will lose to attain it. A soul which is newly converted must pray or else it would fall again. A sinful soul plunged in sin must pray so that it might rise again. There is no soul which is not bound to pray, for every single grace comes to the soul through prayer. St. Faustina too advises that in harsh conditions and great challenges of our lives, all the more we are to persevere in our prayers and never give up and continue to beg God for His mercy to embrace the suffering of humanity. And so for this, in St. Fortisna's diary, paragraph 872, she says, A soul should be faithful to prayer despite torments, dryness and temptations, because often the realization of God's great plans depends on such prayers. If we do not persevere in such prayer, we frustrate what the Lord wanted to do through us or within us. Let every soul remember these words. And being in anguish, he prayed longer. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as I conclude and sum up, let us remind ourselves that on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the message you and I need to take heed of is first of all, our need to humble ourselves, to reverence, praise and serve God for His greater glory. This is because He is our Almighty God and Saviour. And as such, you and I and the whole of humanity need a radical conversion of hearts from our arrogance and our pride. You and I also need to renew our faith in God through our fidelity to our prayers, regardless of who we are, what our state of life and faith are, and very importantly, our need to persevere in our prayers in times of crisis. Instead of giving up on our prayers and on God's mercy for us and our humanity. And if you and I are to witness to the graces of the divine mercy of God flowing into the world that is desperately needing God's mercy, then let us remember that you and I are called by God to be channels of His mercy by showing mercy, forgiveness and compassion to one another at all times. For St. Faustina in her vision tells us, O Lord, I want to be completely transformed into your mercy and to be your living reflection. May the greatest of all divine attributes, that of your unfathomable mercy, pass through my heart and soul to my neighbour. And finally, let us end by drawing upon the spiritual consolation of the divine mercy of our risen Lord, who through St. Faustina tells us in paragraph 187 of her diary, quote, I desire that you know more profoundly the love that burns in my heart for souls, and you will understand this when you meditate upon my passion. Call upon my mercy on behalf of sinners. I desire their salvation. 
And when you say this prayer with a contrite heart and with faith on behalf of some sinner, I will give him the grace of conversion. And this is the prayer. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Thank you and God bless you. Most merciful Jesus, I turn to you in my need. You are worthy of my complete trust. You are faithful in all things. When my life is filled with confusion, give me clarity and faith. When I am tempted to despair, fill my soul with hope. Most merciful Jesus, I trust you in all things. I trust in the perfect plan for my life. I trust you when I cannot comprehend your divine will. I trust you when all feels lost. Jesus, I trust you more than I trust myself. Most merciful Jesus, you are all-knowing and nothing is beyond your sight. You are all-loving, nothing in my life is beyond your concern. You are all-powerful, nothing is beyond your grace. Most merciful Jesus, I trust in you. I trust in you. I trust in you. May I trust you always and in all things. May I daily surrender to your divine mercy. Most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy, pray for us as we turn to you in our needs. The act of consecration to the Divine Mercy. Most merciful Jesus, your goodness is infinite and the treasures of your grace inexhaustible. I have infinite trust in your mercy, which is above all your works. I surrender myself to you entirely and without reserve to spread your mercy through the performance of both spiritual and corporal works of mercy, particularly in converting sinners, in consoling and aiding the needy, the afflicted and the sick. Guide us then as your possessions and your glory, for which I have everything to fear for my human weakness at the same time, I have everything to hope for from your mercy. May all mankind come to know the fathomless depths of your mercy, to confide in it and to glorify it forever. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you.
you have given them bread from heaven. Heaven in itself delight. Let us pray. O God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You who lives and reigns forever and ever. Oh. 